Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 6, Advanced Modeling Tools, Part 1. This video is supplemented with the given PowerPoint. This lecture will show you how to use different techniques to model more complex objects. Let's start with holes. This technique allows the user to create four different types of holes in one simple step. The type of holes are general, counter bore, counter sink, and tamper holes. Let's start by opening Lecture 6, Part 1. In order to get the Holes tool, we go to the upper toolbar and click on the hole icon. A new window will show. Depending on the hole that you are selecting, you go into this drop-down menu. Let's start with General Hole. We're going to specify the point at which you want to start the hole. So since we do not have a hole that is created, we're going to simply start at the center point of the circle. At this moment, you are going to see the different type of forms that you're going to have for the hole. For the general, we have a simple hole. What it is, is a simple cylinder with a tip at the bottom. This tip represents the drill that will be used to create the hole in reality. So we provide the diameter of the hole and the depth that we want to have. Notice that we have a value or we have choices uh, such as until selected, until next or through by. So simply let's go through a value and then this gives us the idea of the tip angle. Once again, the tip represents the actual drill bit that will be created in this hole. Since we actually are removing material, the Boolean selection by default is going to be subtract. So let's click OK. And now we're going to see the hole. If you notice, this hole looks like an extrusion of a cylinder. To see the difference between extrusion and simple hole, we're going to open the part lecture 6, part 1a. In this part, I have created two holes, one by extrusion and the other one by simple hole. To see the difference, we're going to change the view to the front view, and we're going to change this solid into an static wireframe. If you notice, the first hole that was created as an extrusion simply has the cylindrical shape of the hole. However, when it was created as a simple hole, it has the tip of the bit. So you have to be very careful depending on what tool you need to use for your particular solid and decide whether you want an extrusion or whether you want a hole. If the hole goes completely through, then there is not going to be a difference because the bit is going to be after the solid and there will not be any difference and that will be just preference of the user. To go over of how to create counterpoint holes, we're going to deactivate the simple hole. Going to follow the same steps, click on hole, select the point in which you would like to start, and then we're going to go from simple to counterpoint. Notice the choices that we're going to have. We're going to have a C board, which is the upper uh, cylinder that you have at the top, and the bottom diameter. So let's just start with changing this value to 15 and it's going to let's see have a depth of 10. Then notice that the second diameter always has to be smaller than the seaboard diameter. So let's see 10 and then at this moment you want to have a depth for the second part. So you could have either a value until selected until next through by. So let's see, we could actually make it through hole. So notice that it creates the counterpoint at the top and then makes a hole through the whole thing. Once again, because it's a hole, the boolean by default is subtract. Let's click OK. To see how it looks, make sure that you go into a static wireframe. In order to go over how to create a counter sunk hole, let's deactivate the counter board 
and let's go back to shader with edges let's go to hole select the beginning point and now let's change to counter sock once again you have the choices for the sync diameter and the angle and the final diameter let's go into a small diameter of 10 so that we can have a counter sync of about 15 and the angle that you are going to have by default is usually 90. However, if you want to change it, you could do so just by changing the number. But if that it changes like this, you could always have something a lot smaller so that it has a higher uh, steep. If you want, you could also change the depth of the final diameter. Once again, because it's a hole, it has subtract as the Boolean choice. Then you click OK. You could see the countersink hole properly shown over here. However, if you want more details, you could always go back to a static frame. Let's go over temporary holes. Let's deactivate the last hole we created and go back to shaded with edges. Let's click on hole, select the beginning point, and now we're going to select temper. The first choice that you have is the beginning diameter and then the temper angle that you're going to use. Then you could say to go through the whole body or you could go up to a specific distance until selected or until next. If we want a specific distance, we do like this. We add the value. Once again, the Boolean is going to be subtracted by default. Click OK. And if you want to see it, go to static wireframe. The next technique is how to add grooves. A groove is a narrow indentation in a surface. NX has three available choices for a groove. Rectangular, bold end, and U groove, depending on the cross-sectional shape of the tool that makes the groove. In many cases, the groove command is not available in the main toolbar. So we need to find it. Simply type groove in the search command area and hit enter. Notice that it indicates that it's currently hidden. In order to find the location, we could simply put our mouse in top of the command and it will show you the path that you have to do using the drop down menus to get the command. An alternative is to make it unhidden. To do that, Click on the arrow and select a location where you want the icon to show. So let's see, I'm just going to have it on the home. Now notice that the groove command is now in the main toolbar. Let's start by clicking on the groove icon. A new window will show indicating the three type of choices that you have. Let's start with rectangular. By default, and next we'll ask you to add a name for the groove. This is not necessary for you to complete the groove. Notice that at the bottom part of the window will show you the steps that you need to do in order to complete the groove. The first part is to select the surface. Then indicate the groove diameter and the width. So let's choose 40 and 5. Then you need to indicate a distance between the surface and the tool. The tool is represented by this big disk over here. So let's select the bottom edge and the bottom edge of the tool and let's provide a distance. Let's see 10 and click OK. Notice that the groove was created. Let's do it again for the bold end groove. Follow the same steps, select bold end. Once again, you do not need to add a name, select the surface, provide information for the diameters, for both of them. Once again, you need a distance between the solid and the tool, and you need to provide a distance. Let's try the last U groove. Select the surface, 
and enter the information let's see 40 5 and let's keep that too say okay identify the distance so once again you need to create select a surface from the solid and a surface from the tool you create a distance and then let's say okay now let's compare the three groups to do that let's go to the front view now notice the three type of groups in a rectangular the cross-sectional shape of the group is a rectangle notice over here we have a circle and over here we have a u-shape that is how you decide what type of group you want to create the next technique is to learn how to create a slot. A slot is a narrow opening through which an object could pass. NX has five different choices. Rectangular, bold end, U slot, T slot, and dovetail. Once again, the choice is based on the cross-sectional area of the tools. Let's just start by opening the file lecture six, part two. Once again, in many cases, the slot command, it is not on the main tool. So let's look for it. Once again, it says that it's hidden. If you could see, it shows you the steps on the main drop-on menus. And if we want to, we could have it shown. And now it's in here. Let's click on the icon so we could go over the different techniques. Let's start with rectangle. We're gonna hit OK. Once again, it's gonna ask you for names. You do not have to add a name. Just follow the steps given in the bottom part of the screen. Let's select the surface. You need to indicate a horizontal reference. So choose any line that you want to be parallel to this line. indicate the size of the slot. So let's see, we want to see it. So let's see 10, the width about three, and the depth about two. See okay? Notice that it will show. Now we need to provide a position to it. Let's zoom in so we could actually see what we're doing. Oops, too much. We need to create a distance, so choose a distance between a surface to the center, and we could modify it, so let's see, 30. And let's now do from here to the other center line, and let's make it 40. Once you have done the, the positioning, simply click OK. And notice that this lot has been created. To see it a little bit better, or more details about it, let's go to the static wireframe. Now you can see in more detail the slot that we created. Okay, let's go over all the techniques. Let's zoom out. Let's go into shaded with edge lines, and let's go to the process with the other choices. Let's go bold end, once again select the surface, horizontal reference, so that's the direction that is going to be parallel to the slot, and let's make it a little bit bigger so we could see it, once again you need to put dimensions, so we are from here to here, Let's see, 60. And then another dimension. So we go from here to here. And let's see, 60 again. Let's try the other ones and then we will compare them. Use slot. So select the surface. Follow the steps. Let's make them all parallel to each other. So let's make it 5. Five, one, and ten, so we can see it. 
with the dimensions that you want. Let's do the other dimension now. Okay, let's try the next choice. T slot. Select the surface, the direction. Let's make it 2 .5, 2 .5, 5, 5, and 10. Once again, we can see it. And let's choose the last one. Now to see the difference, let's go into a wireframe. Let's zoom in so that we can see the difference. This is a rectangular slot. Notice that the cross-sectional for that slot is a rectangle. This is a bold end. This is a U. This is a T slot, meaning that it has a backward T. And this is a dovetail. So it increases its cross-sectional area based on the angle that you provide. So try it and go over the different techniques on your own. The next technique is the edge blend. With this technique, the user is able to convert a sharp edge or corner into a smooth one. Let's go to the edge blend icon and select one or more edges that you would like to convert. Say for example, one and two. Select the radius that you want, let's see, three. And then once you're done with your selection and your radius, you press OK. If you want to select a corner, simply follow the same process. Select all the lines that are connected to that particular corner. Once you're done with your selection, press OK. Notice that in X will take care of the uh, particular corner in order to make it nice and smooth. If you want to create an edge blend that has different values of radius at different points, use the following steps. Go to Edge Blend, select the edge, and then select the different points. Let's just start, for example, at the corner with one. 5 and at this location we want let's see 7 this location we want 9 and then at the end we want 5 again we hit ok and notice now how our edge blend is created with different ready if you want to create an edge blend that only goes to up to a certain section in the edge, use the following steps. Go to Edge Blend, select the edge, and now select the ending point that you want. And then indicate what distance you want to have away from this ending point. Let's see, 30. And notice that the edge now stops 30 millimeters before the ending point. This is the end of lecture 6, Advanced Modeling Tools Part 1. Complete all the required quizzes, review the material given in the PowerPoint and Chapter 6 from your textbook, and be ready to start class assignments.